Hello developers, welcome to TapaScript. If you are a web developer in 2024, there are high chances that you know about the component library called SharedCN and the utility function called CN. In case you haven't, don't worry about it. This is what we're going to discuss in this video. We are going to get familiar with the CN utility function and try to understand how this is going to help you as a web developer. So let's get into some coding to understand what CN is and let's create one. If you happen to see any shared CN component code, for example, I'm seeing the code of the avatar component, you will definitely see a utility function called CN imported from the utils under live. Now, if I go to utils, I will see this utility function called CN, which takes some inputs and then do something inside it. Now, our intention is to understand what exactly it is doing, what is CLSX, what is TW merge, and how we can create our own CN function and try to use it with our React application. Let us start learning it with use case. Let's consider we have a React project and I'm running this React project with vid. In my app.jsx file, I have a simple component called fancy heading, which takes a props called title. And the value of the title is we are learning CN. And in the fancy heading, if you see, it just take this title as a props and render that within one H1. And the H1 is having a default class name called text center and text gray 800. That's all. One more thing to notice over here that I have zoomed in this text on my browser so it is looking big, but usually this will be a very small text because I have not given any text size in my class name. This is our very basic setup. Now we want to do some kind of conditional styling. For example, I can pass another props to this particular component, say is primary. And if it is a primary heading, in that case, I want to do something else. For example, I want to make this text really bigger. I want to put a blue color, you know, all those kind of things that I am actually interested in doing. Now, this is where the library CLSX comes into picture. CLSX is an utility for constructing class name strings conditionally. That means if you put some condition and based on the condition, you want to add some class name, that's where you will be using CLSX. It's a very, very lightweight utility and you can use CLSX without React as well. So using CLSX, now I can conditionally add another style. For example, I'll make text larger if the is primary is true, right? Let me just format this a little bit. All right, this looks better and clean. Now I'm going to install CLSX first. From here, I'm going to do yarn add CLSX. All right, it got installed. Now over here, let me import CLSX. I can import CLSX in two ways. You can import it as a default import or as a name import as well, like this. Both should be fine. Now here in the class name, I'm going to put some condition. So why I'm putting this curly braces over there. And this is where I'm saying, I'm going to use this CLSX function, which takes multiple parameters. And the first parameter is the default style. I'm not going to tamper that at all. And the second parameter going to be a condition through an object which says make it a bigger text like 3xl only if this particular condition is matched okay so what we're saying if is primary is true then make this particular fancy headings title as a bigger text with 3xl but make sure the default style that we had passed to it before that is retained so the text gonna be center and the gray color but if i pass is primary is true from app.jsx then this will be a bigger text. So let's go ahead to app.jsx file and over here I'm going to pass is primary as true. Moment I passed is primary as true, you see this is becoming bigger. If I make it as false, it becomes again smaller. So that means CLSX is working great way over here. There is no doubt about it. Now if I go to fancy heading again and I want to do something like this, great. We have this text gray 800. Now when I am in the primary heading mode. I want to change the color of this particular text to blue. So I'm sure that you, what you will be thinking is primary in this condition along with this text 3xl. I can add one more class called text blue 500 and I see that this is appearing blue. So if I go to app.jsx again and turn it to false, it will be appearing as small and again in gray. If I turn it to true, it will be again larger and blue so it is working as expected but hold on as i am inspecting this text this h1 do you see what is happening the class says text center gray 800 text 3xl and again blue 500 
So it has added both the colors in this particular H1. And at the tailwind level, we really don't know like which one will be applicable. We cannot really guarantee this one. Ideally, what should have happened is whenever we are adding another color on top of it, we might pretend like the older color will go off. That means this gray 800 won't be here at all. Only thing we, we should see here is text center, text 3XL, text blue 500 because blue is the one that we are applying last. But what we are seeing at coming to the DOM level, though it is impacting, but the conflict of the Tailwind utility classes are not resolved properly. And we are able to see both the color gray and blue applied over here. Now, we don't want to do this way. When there are more conflicts, there are higher chances that there will be certain things which won't be working the way that you are expecting. That's the time you have to resolve this conflict. And here comes our second NPM Tailwind Merge, which says that this is again an utility function to efficiently merge Tailwind CSS classes, utility classes in JavaScript without any kind of style conflict. So in our situation where we may have a conflict with two colors on the same element, we can actually manage it with the Tailwind Merge library. So let's install Tailwind Merge. Let us do yarn add Tailwind Merge. Great, this is got installed. Now, just like CLSX, let's import TW Merge from Tailwind Merge. And the only thing that we have to do over here is pass this entire expression, whatever the output of CLSX to TW Merge function. So I'll put TW Merge over here and I will just put the parenthesis. That's it. Now, if I go back to my inspect, do you see what happened? I don't see this gray one anymore because the conflict has been resolved. Now, to prove that, I'm going to app.jsx again and I'm turning this true to false. I'm coming to my UI, which becomes smaller again and gray color. And if I come to the inspect mode, that text gray is 800. This is awesome, isn't it? So using CLSX, we can do the dynamic class name. Using TW merge or Tailwind merge, we can merge the class conflicts for the Tailwind utility classes. Now comes CN. The CN utility function is nothing but a shortcut handle of replacing this call that TW merge and the CLSX with the single function. I can create inside SRC a new folder called lib. Inside lib, create a new file called utils.js. And here we are exactly going to migrate each of these things from fancy heading one component to a common place. So I'm just cutting off this CLSX and TW merge import from here going to put here in the utils and here I'm going to write a function and export it at the same point of time and the function name I'm giving as cn which can take inputs and here I will be taking variable number of inputs it means that it doesn't matter how many input class you are actually putting into the cn function it can actually merge everything right and then from here I'm going to return this exactly the same thing tw merge and then the CLSX. So I'm going to copy this. I'm putting it over here and it take this inputs. That's it. Right. So now I have a function CN, which I can now reuse in a multiple places in every component in my react project, wherever I need this kind of dynamic styling plus the conflict resolution of Tailwind utility classes. So in the fancy heading, if I can go to this particular component and I can refactor this by importing cn now because i have cn and i can replace this tw merge and clsx with cn and there will be an extra parenthesis i can get rid of so that's my cn and this cn is now right running with primary as false i'm going to make it as true i see this is working if i inspect i see only this blue class so everything is working properly so ultimately cn is nothing but a utility class which helps us on doing multiple stuff one is about conditionally managing our class name. And second thing is about taking care of Tailwind utility classes conflicts. Now let's take this to the next level and make it almost close to a component that looks like a shared CN component, our own fancy heading component, but looks like a shared CN component. All right. So what we can do instead of passing this is primary as true, we can do something called a variant, right? We can call it like a variant. And the variant we can pass as primary, secondary, whatever it is, right? So you can pass as, say, a primary variant, our own fancy heading component, all right? Now, as we are passing variant, we'll go to fancy heading. And now, instead of primary, it is definitely going to take variant as a prop. And what we can do, we can write a simple function over here, something like this, a very simple JavaScript function with the switch case. What do we say? 
that passing variant, if variant is primary, put these styles. If variant is secondary, put these styles. If variant is not primary or secondary, put a different style, a default style, basically. Now, instead of doing things like this, like this CN, and then having you know a lot of this text over here and managing the primary as the east primary and all this thing, I can get rid of everything over here. And instead of that, I can just say this get variant style and I can get rid of each of this item completely, call the function and pass just the variant. So now what will happen if the variant is passed as primary from app.jsx file, this get variant style will be called using variant as primary. And for primary variant, I'll get this text center, text 3 Excel and text blue 500. If it is passed as secondary, I'll get a green text maybe a little bit smaller text. If primary and secondary are not passed or something else passed, I'll be getting more smaller text with a gray color, right? Let's test this out. So primary is already passed and I'm getting blue. You can see this. Now I'll be passing secondary. All right. So I am getting a green text. I'm just zooming it a little bit for you so that you can view it. So I'm getting a green text. And if I don't pass any of the variant, I'll get back to my same old gray one. Now, if you look into your chat CN code for a moment, now do you see what happened over here? This is a badge component, which is ultimately a div, just like our H1, having a class name, which is having this CN function, exactly like the CN function we have written. And here we have something called badge variants, like the variants function we have written. Inside that we are passing this variant and based on the variant, we are actually getting a particular variant. If we are passing outline, we are getting this style. If we are passing destructive, we are getting this style. We are getting this. We have written in the switch case way. In case of ShatCN, they have used a library called CVA, which is nothing but a class variance authority. You can check that out and we'll be creating a video on class variance authority very soon to get a deep dive into that as well. Now you can also do things like this here. We are able to pass the class name as well. It means additional class name. How we are able to pass this additional class name? Because the CN accepts multiple variable number of inputs. So you can pass any number of inputs over here. That's the reason in the chat CN also, along with your regular variant based class names, you can also pass your own classes from outside. We can do the same thing for our component as well, right? So let's do this. Let's add a prop called class name and in our fancy heading component and taking this class name in the CN function, we can pass this class name. Assuming that whenever we pass a class name to this particular fancy heading component, this will be again added to the base classes that we are getting based on variants, right? So if we go to app.jsx file, bring back our variant, say secondary, and here we are going to pass prop called class name, and let's add a class name called underline from Tailwind CSS. Do we see this underlying appearing over here? Now you see the control. Based on your variant, you are getting different kind of heading, like a secondary heading, or a primary heading. Now, after getting the primary or secondary heading, you can also add the extra classes based on your use cases and the CN function underlying this is going to facilitate this one very, very beautifully. So this is what the CN utility class is about. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, don't forget to like and share because that's going to motivate me a lot. In the next video, we are going to use chat CN with Next.js 14 and going to integrate and look into the chat CN code a little bit more and try to do some kind of customization. Talking about Next.js 14, you can check out my entire playlist on Next.js 14 how to build full stack application using Next.js 14. I'm sure that you're going to like it. Stay well, keep learning. See you soon with another video.